So this is a weekend that we gather together to celebrate under the banners of red, white, and blue. It used to just be one day, but when it's on a Thursday, a Friday, a Monday, or a Tuesday, it's the whole weekend, right? It is our celebration of freedom, of independence. It is our celebration of our nation's history and birthday. And it seems that whenever we gather on this weekend, we always get this reading. This reading that can so confuse us because it sounds so much like, well, let me read it for you and see if you can remember where this comes from. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. You know where that's from, right? Statue of Liberty. But doesn't it sound a whole lot like, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Very different and yet so much sounding the same. When I woke up on Friday morning, I got up and I did what I do to get the news, which is not read the newspaper. I know many of you do that, but instead, I turn television on to the Today Show, all right? That's where I get my news. I can't help it, that's me. And there were a lot of commercials Sunday. Happy Fourth of July. You are free to go shopping because it's 60% off at Macy's. You are independent from the pump because our new cars will send you less often to the gas station. On and on. And you know, you all notice that the commercials get louder than the regular programming, right? To really get your attention. They're trying to distract you into going down some other path. Today, it's possible for us in this day and age to get confused and distracted about the difference between our national pride, our patriotism, and our religiosity, for they seem to use the same words. Even when I hear someone do the Pledge of Allegiance, they often at the very end say, Amen. And it's not a prayer. But maybe it should be a prayer because it makes sense. One nation under God with liberty and justice for all. Yes, that is probably something we can get around saying amen to and believe in. For I pray for that. And amen, meaning yes, let it be so, makes sense. It is so easy to get my nationality mixed up with my religiosity. Peace independence, freedom. Today, we notice that Jesus is talking about burdens and about coming together as a people. In our Matthean Gospel reading for today, some have just come to Jesus and asked some questions from John the Baptist, saying, are you, Jesus, really the one John wants to know? And what Jesus goes into talking about is not about that really doesn't answer that question and doesn't really talk only for the disciples. He's really talking to the overhearers, those outside of his small circle, where he talks about John and Jesus. He says, I played the flute and you wouldn't dance or the, uh, the children cry and then, or we played the funeral and you wouldn't mourn. You know how children play that little sing song back and forth? I want to do this. No, I want to do that. And so instead of playing at all, the children sit in the marketplace. And then Jesus begins to talk about the difference. That John the Baptist, who led this austere life, eating bugs, having very few friends, being smelly and wearing weird clothes, and the people wouldn't listen to his message. So then Jesus comes, 
He has many friends around him all the time. He talks about love and joy and peace. He heals those in need. He spends time with the outcast and the sinner, and they reject that message as well. And then it's almost like Jesus says, nevertheless, come to me. Then he gives an invitation. Come to me, all of you who are weary, and I'll give you rest. Come, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The image of yoke in the Old Testament is often that which showed people how they were tied to the law, to the rules of their faith, to the rules of life, of how to live better in the world. And the yoke was something that almost seemed over their shoulders like prison or like something horrible. It's in, it's in uh, Jeremiah that the yoke is brought forward and he throws it down in front of the king. But when Jesus, who often takes stories and reinterprets them for us, you know, talks about the yoke, I believe he's not talking about the independence that people seem to think, think that they need to have in the world, but instead about our interdependence. For it's true, two can make work lighter, can make the load more fun. It's true that being tied to another helps us, and also knowing that Jesus ties himself to us is helpful. As Jesus goes on to talk to his disciples about coming to him and about being community, we read that story for our community. And we look around at our own and talk about the burdens in the world. Now, Jesus never said it was going to be easy, but it would be more satisfying. It would be eternally more satisfying. There are burdens on our shoulders that we can't see. You know, more often than anything, when I say to someone, how are you? It used to be that people always said, oh, fine, no matter what, right? No, instead, nowadays, when I say to someone, oh, how are you? Here's the three words I hear. I'm so busy. Some people say I'm so tired. But mostly it's, gosh, really busy, right? We are so busy all the time that to find rest would be a great joy. There are burdens that come to people, the burden of debt, the burden of addiction, the burden of depression, the burden of family responsibilities. Burdens are being piled on us all the time. And I think what Jesus is trying to get us all to realize is that if we were vulnerable enough to say we need help, we need to be tied to another, that that kind of connection is what can make all the difference. That being connected is what faith is all about. So our nation and our faith may use some of the same words, freedom, independence. But in truth, the, the difference, the number one, the real difference is Jesus and the cross and the way to get there. And Jesus is saying the best way to make that furrow down that road is with another. And that the law, those guiding principles for our faith, are not to be a burden to us, to hold us back to make us angry uh, with God or with the rules of our faith, but they are instead to offer us direction, to help us to be tied to another so that we would be stronger. This weekend we celebrate our national independence, but we also know a greater celebration because of Jesus, who calls us to rest, who calls us to work with others, who calls us to the freedom from fear and for the liberation 
the interdependence that comes from community, which is what this church and all of Christ's church is. But for our nation, I still pray. I still pray and hope you pray for justice and peace for all. I pray that our nation would take that responsibility and know how to live in the light and maybe to learn a little interdependence as well. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. Amen.